Greetings, dear viewers, and welcome to the 10th episode of this StarCraft II Newbie Guide. So, in the previous episode, we played a custom match, or a couple of custom matches, actually, as Protoss, just to get some, get some Protoss gameplay out there, and I hope that was illustrative and informative to those of you who are interested in that aspect of StarCraft II play. But in this video, I'd like to do something a little bit different, but it's something that's very important when it comes to StarCraft II multiplayer play. Just before this, I was recording a versus AI match, and as you can tell here, we lost some progress on this progress bar, which means that game was a loss. We were just at the far right side, just like right here in the progress bar, but after the loss, we're now just slightly past half the uh, harder section right here, and that's what's going to happen whenever you take a loss in uh, the versus AI section of this game, and you're going to keep doing that, you're going to win, you're going to lose, you're going to win, you're going to lose if you're a newer if you're a newer player, and I'm not a newer player, so apparently you're going to win, you're going to lose, um, just playing versus AI sometimes, just expect that to happen, and this is one of the ways that you can improve. I want to talk a little bit about how that game went before we move on, and, and before we do what we're going to do with it, I want to talk a little bit about how that game went. So in the early game, I thought to do something experimental. I went for an early extractor, and that was going to enable us to get a very quick metabolic boost for our Zergling. So I go for an extractor before spawning pool. Normally you get your spawning pool first so that you can get ready to get Zerglings and your queens and all kinds of stuff like that, but I changed it up a little bit and went for an early extractor, again, just to get some early gas pumping into the economy so that we can do some things, you know, with gas units or gas upgrades and things like that. So that's one thing that I just wanted to experiment with. I didn't have a big grand build order in mind. I didn't really know how this was going to turn out. Uh, as a result, I was able to get very fast... Uh, metabolic boost for my Zerglings, and we were able to scout out the opponent's base, who was a Terran player. And this Terran player had... Uh, I, I found that there was a factory being built for the Terran player, and that signifies a mech build, which means you can expect things like Hellions and Siege Tanks and stuff like that um, leading into the game. So, seeing this, my Zerglings were fairly easily wiped out because Hellions are extremely good against Zerglings. And I found that going gas first and then pulling the drones off of gas after having enough a quick metabolic boost led into an economy where I had a lot of extra minerals that I couldn't really spend because, you know, having only uh, one hatchery without a queen or without, you know, a, a really solid base in order to produce larva, uh, I needed to find a way to spend these minerals. So I expanded twice, giving me three hatcheries on the map very early. And the idea there is that you need to pump out a whole lot of drones in this game so that you can get a really fast economy uh, going early on in the game. Now when you do this, it does create opportunities for you to create a very strong early, uh, very strong army in the mid game full of tier 2 units. So things like lair tech, like mutalisks and hydralisks and things like that. Uh, instead of the early units that you normally have, like zerglings and roaches, you normally get a, a very strong tier 2 or even like a tier 3 army very quickly whenever you expand fast, and that gives you a huge uh, boost in strength leading into the mid and even the late game over your opponent if you are not punished for going for a very fast double expansion build like this one. Uh, there are ways to defend against it and things like that. However, um, we were punished because the Terran player came in with an attack and I only at, the, at that time I only had Zerglings to defend my base and as we know uh, the units that Terran had, which are Hellions and Marines, uh, that, that composition of units is extremely good against Zerglings. And so, uh, in the end, what it turned out, in the end of that game, what it turned out to be was it turned out to be a loss. So, we went ahead and GG'd that one, we exited out, and now we're at this point where we had lost a little bit of progress here on this bar. So now I'm going to, I want to talk about a very important concept in StarCraft 2. Whenever you take a loss like that, and you don't always have to do this, but I do recommend doing this frequently. Yeah, as frequently as you feel comfortable with, as frequently as you have time for, but I do recommend doing something like this. What you can do whenever it comes to a loss in StarCraft 2 is you can go to the replays section here in the top right we'll click on replays and we'll see that you've got a list of all of your games that you've played recently and you can uh, your most recent one is displayed right here at the top and you can see here it is we've got my Zerg versus Terran game on Laralac Crest 7 minutes and 25 seconds we can watch this replay in a format that lets us slow things down, even pause. We get to see the whole map, see what the opponent is up to. We get to watch the game and really analyze it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up Lairlac Crest here. Going to open up this Lairlac Crest game. All right, so here we go. Automatically, the game is centered on 
uh, my camera view. So I don't have to do anything, and that's me pinging on the map um, because I did that in order to illustrate some things during the recording. So let's just not even worry about those for right now. Those are just the potential starting points uh, for the, the opponent. So here we go on this game. Now, as we can see here, I'm going for that early extractor, like I said I was doing, but like I was going to do. And uh, instead of going for the spawning pool first. So while this is going on, we can actually select uh, the AI. We can actually select our opponent's view. This is what our opponent sees where our base is, which is absolutely nothing. But here's what they see uh, at their base. And we can see that they're going for a supply depot early on. Of course, you know, that's, that's fairly typical stuff. And we can also set the camera to everyone so we can see both at the same time. So if we scroll down, we can see my overlord going over there, my base. We can see both players... Um, doing their thing here. And, you know, we know a lot of what goes on in this early game. I switched it over to my view because that's what we're going to be focusing on for right now. Uh, in the uh, early game, we know a lot of what's going on. So here in the replays, we can actually increase speed using this plus uh, this plus button right here. We're going to in increase speed to faster times four so we can get, this, uh, get to a point where we might be able to make some decisions. We're trying to analyze this game and see what happened, where we can improve. That's the whole point. So there's that early expansion that I was talking about. My drone just went out there. And you notice we get the queen fairly late. My overlord gets over to the base. Actually, let's go ahead and decrease speed back down to uh, faster. And let's jump back a few seconds here. We're going to jump back. And I'm watching the mini-map that shows there on the right side to see where the overlord is. Okay, let's jump back to about this point. Okay. Seeking to that point. And here's the overlord. We're going to take control of the camera here and just... Um, watch what happens. I noticed that there is a factory being built right here. As I'm pulling my overlord away, I noticed that there was a factory. And that tells me that there is a, a mech build coming. So that's one of the things that I probably should have noted right away um, in order to avoid losing this game. And we'll talk about that again shortly. So they take out my overlord. And I continue building over here. And as we can see, at this point in the game, 2 minutes and 30 seconds in, we're moving along. Um, is this faster speed? This is faster speed. We're moving along with this expansion. And if we can, if you take a look over in the top right, you can see I've got a lot of minerals just building up here. My zerglings finish. And we're going to press D to open up the production tab. We can see there are a lot of a lot of tools you can use in this replay thing. It's, it's really good for you to ex experiment with. But Metabolic Boost just finished. It's a very early Metabolic Boost, and I send my Zerglings over. Let's go ahead and follow them around. I'm sending my Zerglings over. I'm going to hit pause real quick. See, I can pause the replay. So I've got my Zerglings selected. They're moving over to the Terran base. While this is happening, I start up this expansion. Let's go ahead and go back to where we're with the Zerglings. And look on the mini-map where I'm going right here. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and drag. This is where the Zerglings started. This is my, this is my first expansion coming up. Here's my main base. And over here I decided to expand again because I had a whole lot of minerals just in the bank and I figured, I figured it would be a good uh, opportunity to take an expansion. And now one thing I'm trying to do with these Zerglings is I'm trying to see if the opponent is starting up any expansions of their own or if they're going to attack or if I need to worry about you know a large force or what. I'm just trying to keep tabs on the enemy. I know so far that they've got a factory so I can expect mech units coming out. I need to know more about this, though. I need to know if they're expanding, basically, because that's going to tell me if I'm safe to keep doing this. So I'm going to hit play, and the Zerglings move up. Let's go ahead and follow them. Uh, the Zerglings move up here. They move up the ramp. They get attacked. We're going we're gonna to pause again. Uh, so they get, they get attacked, and I press the space bar at this point in time when I'm playing the game, and that zooms in on my Zerglings. I see that they got destroyed by this group of Marines and that there's a Hellion here. So, yeah, they are producing some mech units. Let's go ahead and... Set it down to normal speed just so we can... No, let's, let's go... Yeah, normal speed's fine. We're going to hit play. And I'm looking here. I'm seeing what's going on. I see that there's a Hellion. The Hellion starts burning my Zerglings. There's basically no way out for these Zerglings because the units that are here are very detrimental to that composition. It's just a small group of Zerglings. So they were basically a fairly expensive scouting force. But they did tell me the information I wanted to know. I wanted to know if there was expansion. There's not an expansion. And I wanted to know if they were building up units. And they are building up units. So there is that. So we move on down here, and I continue to build my uh, expansions. And my concern at this point now is, well, I've got these expansions building, I need to build up an economy. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I'm taking a little bit of a risk at this point. That's what's happening. I'm taking a little bit of a risk by continuing to build up my economy, even knowing that they, number one, Terran doesn't have an expansion, and number two, Terran is building up an army, and I don't have uh, an army. So, because they don't have an expansion, and they have the superior army, that's usually what happens. You get units instead of economy um, early on. That's one of the paths that you can take. Uh, that that, make, that means that they're going to pose a little bit of a threat, doesn't it? So anyway, I'm continuing to build up my expansions. I'm getting more queens. I'm getting more drones. I'm building up, I'm building up a, a strong infrastructure 
to produce a powerful mid-game army. And that's where I plan to take the game, is in the mid-game. Of course, we already know that this is a loss, so um, that's obviously not what's going to happen. Notice here, uh, no, notice here how I'm not scouting anywhere at this point. I've got an overlord moving out, but that's about all I've got. Because I've got no military units, I've got no zerglings, I'm just producing drones and, um, and queens, and just trying to get my economy boosting. And this is, this right here, I'm going to pause at this point. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna ask if you can spot my mistake at this point. It's a fairly... I'm not going to say it's an obvious mistake, maybe not to newer players, but I'm going to ask if you can spot my mistake, because it should be obvious at this point. Uh, well, I mean, it should be fairly clear, not really obvious. It should be fairly clear at this point what my mistake was. In fact, I've already mentioned it, I just haven't outright said it was a mistake yet. So I'm just going to pause right here and let you think about it if you want to. I'm going to unpause. Another queen pops up. So, yeah... If you can spot what the mistake is, you know, maybe leave it in the comments or what have you at this point, and then see if you were correct, or don't leave it in the comments and just, you know, see if you were correct. So anyway, I'm going to unpause. There's an SCV scouting out my base here, so the SCV's taking a look around. If this were an actual player, this would be a very telling situation. They would move out here, they would see that there's an expansion here, they would see there's an expansion here, and they know that my main base is here. So, uh, here comes the enemy's attack force. They're moving in at this point. So they've got a large army coming in that... I just don't have the forces to deal with. I immediately begin training up a lot of Zerglings. I'm going to hit pause. And up here in the top left in the production tab, you can see what both players are building. You can see I start building up 32 Zerglings immediately. I don't have access to roaches. I don't have access... Uh, I haven't built any spine crawlers or anything like that. I don't have a ton of queens or anything. So I basically don't have anything to deal with this composition. These Hellions and these Marines. And there's a lot more Marines... Uh, behind those two in the fog of war here. So there's that. I can go and go to everyone and we can see how many more marines are actually there. So I don't have anything. I'm not prepared for this in any way. And the enemy comes in to make their attack. I'm going to switch back to my camera view now and unpause. So the enemy begins making their attack. I try to micro my queen as best as I can, but it's not, it's not going to help. Another queen hatches. This queen goes down. I try to micro her as well, but... They've got too much range, they've got too much DPS in this small force. My Zerglings hatch, but th th those uh, Hellions, those, uh, those uh, Flame Jets, they deal damage in a line. So instead, let's go ahead and hit pause. Instead of using them to defend, because if I just try and attack those flamethrowing ATVs and those guys with machine guns, these Zerglings are, are going to be completely useless. It's going to do nothing. So instead of trying to defend my base with these Zerglings, I run them past the opponent, and I try and get them into their base. I'm sending them over here, as you can see with that little uh, green marker. I'm sending them right here so that they can start dealing damage to the opponent's SCVs. Maybe start dealing some economic damage in return. Hopefully this will buy me a little bit of time. However, taking out their economy isn't really going to do me much good, is it? Because destroying SCVs, while that will... Uh, Let's go ahead and pause again. My Zerglings are among all these SCVs now. While destroying all these SCVs, and we are going to actually take out quite a few of them. You can see them attacking. It's a big mess in there right now, but you can see plus 50 XP, plus 50 XP, plus 50 XP. Yeah, that's um, a lot of SCVs being destroyed. So the SCVs actually attack the Zerglings and are able to deal a good amount of damage to them, and they have some backup from these Marauders. These Zerglings do get cleaned up. See, the Zerglings are, are down at this point. And yeah, I did a little bit of economic damage there. And if we were going to go later in the game, maybe that would actually help out some. I've got some spine crawlers building. I was hoping that these Hellions would take longer to take out this expansion so that these spine crawlers would finish. And that might actually have bought me a little bit of time to do something, but it's actually not going to uh, work out very well for me. Spine crawlers come up and begin attacking. And it does, they do take out a few units, but overall, this is too much. They're going to take out spine crawler after spine crawler after spine crawler and I'm gonna be left with nothing to defend again except for Zerglings. I do have a Roach Warren building but this was a reactionary Roach Warren that is to say I started building it when I realized I was in trouble so I didn't really have it prepared or anything like that so my economy based build didn't really work out for me and we're just gonna go ahead and speed up the game here to faster times 8 and just show where it all ends up. I hit GG. I type GG even though it's versus an AI opponent. It's just good to get in the habit of typing GG to your opponent before you uh, before you surrender. It's just sportsmanlike. So that's what I did. Type GG. I hit, uh, hit enter and surrendered at that point. So yeah, uh, what was the mistake in this game? What was the mistake? Well, the mistakes, there were a few of them. The mistakes happened fairly early on, actually. Let's jump back here. Let's seek around. Um, let's see. Well, the first mistake, if we jump to 205 in the um, 
at the timer here. We can see as uh, as it seeks over there. This is the game seeking to that point. Whoa, 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 whoa! Pause, 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 pause. We got to go back to faster speed and not not normal speed or uh, not normal times eight or faster times eight, whatever it was. Two o five. Okay, two o four. Fine. We'll seek back there. We're gonna seek there, and then we're gonna set the player camera. There we go. So that it follows what I'm looking at. I believe that's what it's gonna do. Uh, is it? Yes, here we go. My first mistake, yes, here we go. My first mistake was uh, spotting this factory and then doing nothing about it. When I spotted that factory, instead of progressing with making a, uh, instead of progressing with making more economy, what I should have done was dropped a roach warren. A roach warren will let me build roaches, which are great against hellions. Those hellions really don't do much damage at all to roaches. So roaches would have been a great counter to what I just saw happening. So that was my first mistake. I did not react to that as soon as I saw it. Um, so, I mean, that that one may actually be okay if I would have done something like plant spine crawlers or not expand it again. But it turns out that later I did expand again anyway. Under attack. Forces are under attack. Yes, yes. So anyway, I lose this overlord. Not really a big deal. That was going to happen because it's a Terran player and they caught my overlord. Sometimes that's just going to happen. You're just going to lose. Uh, that scouting unit. So that was the first mistake. I should have reacted to that factory. I mean, a factory less than three minutes into the game should really tell you what's what's coming, which is uh, factory units. Hellions and siege tanks are the kinds of things you can expect to see when a Terran player is going for a factory. So my next mistake, let's go ahead and stick with the player camera. Turn that on. My next mistake... Speed up the game here. Faster times four. And faster. My next mistake was right here. When my Zerglings scout out all this area and I see that there's not an expansion and I see that there are definitely Hellions coming out and a sizable force from the Terran player. See, I, my Zerglings are able to spot that. I see that right there. Clear as day on my screen that there's a force there. Again, I should have reacted to that. If my first spotting of this factory didn't prompt me to build a Roach Warren somewhere in my base or prompt me to start putting up Spine Crawlers, then that definitely should have. I really should have... Uh, moved. I uh, really should have reacted to what I scouted. Instead, I gambled and I went for a risk. I said, "You know what?" <laughs> and now that I'm watching the replay, now, now that I'm watching this in replay form, it seems kind of silly to me. It really does. I really should have uh, reacted to what I saw there. <sighs> instead of going for the gamble, instead of going for the unnecessary risk, this next hatchery right here, just because I had a whole bunch of minerals, doesn't mean I had to build it. I could have built other things. I could have built, again, I could have started harvesting up gas a lot sooner because I took my drones off of gas as soon as I had enough me metabolic boost. So I should have taken them off and started, I uh, should have taken some drones off of minerals, started harvesting gas, taken this extractor, and dropped a roach warren and put down a couple of spine crawlers right here. If I would have done that, I would have been perfectly fine to lead into the mid game. And then I probably could have expanded and continued, you know, building up on my economy and doing whatever I wanted to do at that point, but I should have reacted to what I saw. Instead, I gambled. And I basically knew what was coming, too, because if your opponent doesn't have an expansion, but they do have a large force, what are they going to do with it? Sit in their base and do nothing? No, they're going to use it. <laughs> and if you're building the exact build that is weak against that, you really should stop building the exact build that is weak against what your opponent is doing. So there was, and this, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm going for a very economy-heavy build versus an early attack build, and early econ loses to early attack. That's just how it goes. <laughs> and I know this, but I didn't react. To it. Sometimes, though, and this is an important concept as well, sometimes, though, you are going to do stuff like that when you're playing StarCraft. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, I did. I'm sitting here, I'm watching what I'm doing, and it looks clear as day when you're looking at it in a replay. You're like, wow, okay. Yikes. <laughs> That happened, but you're going to do that in in the middle of games because you've got a whole lot of things that you're thinking about at any given time. You're thinking... Um, how to progress the game, you're thinking about what you're doing at this particular point in time, you're thinking about keeping up with your spawn larva, you're thinking about what you need right now, you're thinking about what you need in the next few minutes, you're thinking about what your opponent might be doing, you're, you've got all sorts of stuff going on whenever it comes to StarCraft, so you're going to make some of these mistakes, you've got to allow yourself to make some of those mistakes, and don't think of yourself as bad, don't think of yourself as dumb or stupid or or slow to catch on, or bad at the game, or terrible compared to everyone else, or anything like that. Nothing like that. Don't think of yourself as just trash or or uh, a horrible player or anything like that because you're not. That's the key here. You're going to make these mistakes. This sort of thing happens. And that's part of the fun. Okay? I mean, it's all about perspective. 
everything in this game is all about perspective. Everything, actually in everything, not just this game. Everything is all about perspective. You can look at it as, wow. I mean, if I looked at this replay and I saw myself doing this stuff, I saw myself making this next expansion knowing that the opponent has a force that can take out even my other two expansions. If I saw myself building this expansion at that point, I'd be like, wow, that is a silly play. Why? I mean, why would I do that? That is so dumb. That is the way to lose this match. And knowing that I knew that, <laughs> I'd be like, wow, what a stupid thing to do, right? I mean, it's all about perspective. No, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as, okay, well, I made a mistake. I know what I can do to improve upon this now. I'm watching the replay. I see what my mistake is. And my mistake was not reacting to what I saw. I pinpointed that mistake. And so I've learned from it. So this was, in the technical term, a loss. A, quote, loss, unquote, this was a loss, but it wasn't a defeat. This loss didn't defeat me. This doesn't make me feel worse about playing StarCraft. It doesn't make me feel worse about myself. In fact, it makes me feel better about playing StarCraft. It makes me want to play more, because now that I've seen what my mistake is, I can correct that in the future. And I realize that although this has happened one time, and I've watched this replay, and I have uh, spotted this problem... I realize that in the future I may not actually make use of what I've learned here immediately. This is a concept that you have to allow to sink in. Yeah, maybe in the future I will spot something and again not react to it. That doesn't make me a bad player. That doesn't make me stupid. That doesn't make me dumb. That doesn't make me any of that kind of stuff. That makes me human. Um, it makes me a StarCraft player. Because again, this kind of mistake, I may very well repeat it in the very next game. Or I may very well repeat it 10 games from now. Or 100 games from now. You're not going to see a replay like this and immediately shore up your mistakes. Or you might. You never know. Maybe it's something you catch on and it's like, hey, it just clicks for you, right? Maybe that, maybe that does happen. But in any case, I'm not going to hold myself to any sort of rigid form of rules or anything like that. I'm not going to say, all right, I've spotted this mistake. I'll never make this mistake again. And if I do, then I must be terrible. No, again, it's all about perspective. You've got to realize that you're going to make mistakes whenever you play StarCraft. Uh, so whenever you suffer losses and things like that, you can't let them defeat you. You can't let a loss be a defeat. I very rarely in games like this, in, in StarCraft or very League of Legends, it's not common at all that I am defeated whenever I lose a game. In fact, I see losses as victories as long as I can learn from them. And there's always something to learn from. You just have to be willing to do it. And that should improve. Hopefully, that if you start doing that, that should improve your outlook on all of this, on all competitive forms of play. That should improve your, your outlook on all these things. Because that makes you feel better about your losses. Instead of terrible about them and it helps you put the next foot forward and in fact it may even make you eager to put the next foot forward and that's what that's what competitive play is all about now obviously there is a limit okay there's a limit later on everyone has their upper limit where you know you reach a a, a, uh, a certain level of play where the competition becomes too steep maybe you don't have the time to invest that others have um, maybe things just seem a little bit overwhelming and it stops getting fun like maybe you reach like master level or diamond level or platinum level or even gold level maybe you reach a certain level and you know it's just not as fun to keep pushing forward anymore that's fine too that doesn't that again doesn't make you a bad player that just means you found your limit you take a break you play other games you do other stuff and you know you come back whenever you feel like it can be fun again. Maybe it will be fun again later. Everyone suffers from burn. Well, not really suffers from it, but everyone experiences burnout. And in that case, you can't just keep pushing through it. You've got to slow down, take a step back. Just realize what's going on. And if you if you do go through a point where you, where you improve and improve and improve and it's fun, and then you finally get to a point where you're losing a lot and you start to feel discouraged because all of your former tactics, um, all of your former practices where you... Uh, look at things and you analyze them and you learn from your mistakes. No, no, nothing's working and you're experiencing a, a burnout if you're experiencing that kind of thing. If you get to that point, it's important to realize what's actually happening. You're not uh, bad at the game. You're not, you shouldn't really feel discouraged about that. You should say, okay, well, I'm experiencing some burnout so it's time for me to take a step back and maybe take a break from the game for a little while. And then you come back later and it's like, sometimes 
and this this happens. This really does. Sometimes you come back a little bit later, and whatever it was that was keeping you back is just gone for some reason. After some time to internalize whatever was going on, um, without even really thinking about it, just letting your subconscious go to work on it, if anything, or even if that, you come back, and for some reason, whatever was bothering you just now isn't anymore. And maybe you can take more steps forward. Maybe it's fun for you again. Who knows, man? It, everybody is different. All of these situations are different. But that's, that's all part of the mindset of the game, you know? <laughs> the point of this video is that you can use replays to identify your mistakes and then move forward for the next game rather than feel uh, discouraged about your losses. So the two main concepts that I want to get across here, and actually we've, we've finished watching this, haven't we? So we can just, we can just quit the replay. The two main concepts that I want to get across here are replays can let you... Analyze your uh, analyze games, spot your mistakes, and help you correct them over time. Don't expect to correct them just by watching one replay. Because you may not even be identifying the correct mistakes whenever you first start watching replays, but watch them anyway and see what you can do differently. Pause the game, slow it down, watch what the opponent is doing, watch what you're doing. Watch it several different ways. Spend time with these replays. So that's one point that I want to make. You can use replays to try and correct these sorts of things. And the other point that I want to get across is you're only human. You can't let yourself feel discouraged for losing, or even losing like 10, 15, 20 games in a row. Extremely unlikely, by the way. That is incredibly unlikely. But you can't let yourself feel discouraged for that kind of thing, because you're just human. You can't beat yourself up about that. You just got to keep going on. Unless you don't feel like it anymore, in which case, again, you just take a break. But don't beat yourself up about it, because you are just human when it comes to that kind of stuff. So if you're having trouble finding motivation for continuing to play the game or things like that, try looking at things from a different perspective than you currently are. Because that can often open your eyes, that can often open doors, that can keep you moving forward, that can help you find the fun where you thought the fun had disappeared, maybe? That can help you find the fun in that sort of thing. Alright, so, in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.